together very briefly because we are running out of our time here. I believe God that God himself will just bless every one of us in Jesus' name. Shall we just bow down our heads as we just say a word of prayers? Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the way you've been helping us since we came together. Lord, we just lift up ourselves before you as we come to this important aspect, the clamors of our precious welcome program. And from this, we'll be going to the dinner session. Lord, I pray that as we consider your word, even before the dinner, Lord, you will speak your word to every one of our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. The dreams, Lord, that are dying in us, there will be a revival of those dreams in Jesus' name. Amen. The glorious future, the desirable future you are ahead of every one of us. Lord, I pray you will bring this to fulfillment, Lord, in Jesus' name. Pray that, Lord, you will speak your way to every heart for God. And this word, Lord, will be a blessing to us. Challenge us, Lord, as students, and even as adults, those of us who are working, what we need to do so that we can have that desirable future. Lord, bring this to fulfillment in our lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you have had an answer. Worship and we exalt your name, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 This morning or afternoon at Sussex Talk, we are considering the talk titled Planting the Seeds of a Desirable Future. Planting the Seeds 
or a desirable future. What a talk we need for an occasion like this. What a title we need for a program like this. So that we can know what we need to do. What we need to do so that we can have a desirable future. A future that will you know, meet your expectation. A future that you'll be living for. And I pray that the Lord himself is going to bless us as we consider briefly this talk in Jesus' name. Amen. Planting the seeds of a desirable future. In fact, this is a parable that was given by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ himself. Because he is the architect of success. He is the foundation. He is the one that knows everything that we need to know about success. And there is no way we can talk about success in life and in career without the mention of that name Jesus. Because he is the epitome of success. And he gave us a parable on how we can plant the seed. And what the seed will germinate all. In Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. I will read verses 31 and 32 of Matthew chapter 13. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all seeds. But when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs, and becometh a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. In the branches thereof. You know the text where we have read today, dead about the planting of a seed, and the growing of that seed, until it becomes a mighty Three, that we nest the different kinds of birds. For we who are students, you know, this tells us that whatever we are planting today, whatever you are sowing into your academic life, into your study, for some of us looking for our undergraduate studies, for some of us, some of us looking for our postgraduate studies, for some of us looking for a you know, doctorate study, whatever you are planting to me, you know, you are going to definitely repeat at the end if for a master's, at the end of your one year course. For a graduate course, maybe at the end of three or four years or two years of your graduate degree. Or for a doctorate degree, maybe at the end of your three years of your doctorate degree, of your uh, doctorate uh, thesis. Whatever you are planting now, you are definitely going to reap it. And in this parable, the Lord told us that if we want, if we have the desire to be great in future, if we have the desire, like we have gone through the workshop, the academic talk, they have told us what we need to do so that we can achieve success, what we need to plan so that we can achieve success. In the life in the UK, we have been taught that it's not just achieving the degree that matters, you want to pursue a career, you want to work with a degree, what we need to do. That's why it's necessary that we consider, as a class of a program like this, a subject matter that talks about the planting of the seed of a desirable future. If all these things were considered, both in workshop one, the academic talk, and in workshop two, on the prospect of job in the UK. If these things are going to be a reality in our lives, then it is important, it is necessary that at the beginning of your career, we talk about a subject matter like this, planting the seed for a desirable future. You know, whatever you sow, you will definitely reap. Is that not so? You cannot sow corn and expect to reap an apple. It's not possible. Whatever you sow, if you sow for success, you achieve success. If you sow for distinction, you achieve distinction. If you sow, you know, for a life 
for a job prospect after your career, definitely you will reap it. And that's why we have shown you all these things. That we enhance your sowing so that you can reap a desirable future. For better understanding, we want to consider this talk under Queens of Heaven. Point one, we consider the wise sower seeking a delightful future. The wise sowers seeking a delightful future. Then point two, we consider on wise sowers sowing for a doom future. You know, that will not be your Lord. I say that will not be your Lord. There are people that left their country and came to this country to pursue master's degree, PhD degree, undergraduate degree. But as I'm talking to you now, they are in the prison here. Some of them are in the prison. Some of them have been deported. Some of them, they did not, they did not even finish their career because they were unwise. Because they were unwise and as a result of that, they are reaping a doomed future. But that will not be your Lord. Then point three before we pray. Watchful sowers securing a desirable future. That will be you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, who are the wise sowers? Now, when we talk about sowers, I hope you all understand what I'm talking about. In agriculture, there are people that we call farmers. You know, some of us, we know, so why is pastor talking like this? You know, because some of us will live our life without even knowing the village where we came from. Some of us will live our life without even seeing agricultural feed. Do you understand? Now, there are farmers that go to the field. Now, when they go, they have the seasons of plantation. And you don't miss that season because if you miss that season, when the time of harvest comes, you have nothing to harvest. Do you understand? There are some and so there are some plants you should not miss their seasons and you want to be wise so that you want to consider that at the time of the season of that plant you want to plant that uh, that seed so that at the time of harvesting then you have something to harvest even here in the uk we have agricultural fields all over the country all over the country. Even here in Aberdeen, if you go, you know, we are in the city. But if you go outside Aberdeen, if you are going towards the airport, you will see vast land. Is that not so? These lands are used for agricultural purposes. You know, most of them live salt. Some of them, they plant, you know, they plant vegetables and things like that. And they have season. When the season comes for planting, they start planting. These are wise so, uh, now how do we interpret that to our own situation? We as students, most of us who are French students, this is your season of plantation. This is your first week. Some of us, this is your first month in Aberdeen. This is your first year of your program. We want to be wise so that you begin to know what are the things I need to plant now so that I can have a delightful future. That's why we're considering this point one. What are the things? You know, we have the example of a patriarch of faith, one of the a Bible characters of old in the Old Testament. His name is Isaac. Let's see what he did. In his own time, if you have your Bible there with me, can you just open to Genesis? If you don't have it, it could be projected out of us to, to read along. Genesis chapter 26. Genesis chapter 26. I will read verse, verse from verse 12 of Genesis 26. Then Isaac sold in that land. And receive in the same year, what did he receive? An hundred fold. And the Lord blessed him. Let's stop there. You know, Isaac sow. You know, you must sow. If you don't sow, you will not reap. Tell your neighbor, you must sow. Point to your neighbor. Look at him eyeball to eyeball. You must sow. 
Come on, show something. Now, the question is, you read it in the Bible. Isaac sowed. And as a result of his sowing, the Bible says, he reaped an hundred fold. You will reap an hundred fold. The question is, Pastor, what are the things I need to sow? Seven things quickly I need to share with us before we leave this point more. Seven things we need to sow. You know, as we come to the beginning of our course, number one, there is the need to sow the seed of deliverance from sin. Sin is like a plague. Do you understand? Sin is like a disease. S-I-N. The question is, Pastor, what is sin? Sin is anything you do that is contrary to God. That is sin. Anything you do. Anything. Anything that is contrary. And your conscience is telling you that thing you did is not good. That thing you did is a sin. It could be the sin of lying. You've told a lie. It could be the sin of stealing. Maybe you stole something. Something that is not your own property. You stole that. It could be the sin that you are keeping boyfriend and girlfriend. You know, those things you need at the beginning. This is your first year. If you want a delightful future, if you want success with all the things we've talked about today, you know, if you want the realization of these things in your life, there must be the deliverer. You must so you must be free from sin. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 that thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sin. Jesus came to save us from our sin. We cannot save ourselves. We cannot deliver ourselves. Maybe you've gone into the sin of masturbation, the sin of homosexuality, the sin of smoking and drinking, you know, the sin of lying, the sin of saying, well, for me, I do no go. That's the sin. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. That's why Jesus came, so that he can deliver you from sin. And will it not be a good opportunity that as you are starting your career, as you are starting your progress in life, as you are starting your master's, your PhD, your undergraduate course, will it not be a good thing that you start with Jesus? You start with this number one thing, deliverance from sin, that you are free from sin. The question is, Pastor, how can I be delivered from sin? We cannot deliver ourselves. The only way we can be delivered, the Bible says, Whosoever covereth his sin shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. You need to confess your sin. Not to me, because I cannot save you. But you confess your sins to God as we are going to pray. You just tell God, whatever thing you've done that is wrong. You know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten soul, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You, you know, you just open up to God and you tell God your sin, that sin that we, you know you've done and it's against God and your heart is telling you, you need to repent of that, you need to confess that sins to God. Maybe you've even murdered, murdered by abortion, murdered by, you know, by killing, murdered by, you know, you killed the unborn child. You need to confess Confess all those sins to God and come to God today and say, God, I'm sorry. Lord Jesus, forgive me, pardon me, wash me with your blood. And you accept Jesus into your heart, He will forgive you, He will pardon you, He will cleanse you, and you'll be free from sin in Jesus' name. I didn't hear your amen. amen. Then number two, the, thing, the second thing you need to sow. There must be that desire for success. You must have that desire. You know, you've listened to the testimony of our brother. He says when he came to the university, he had that desire that he wants to make a distinction. Is that not so? He had that desire. And it was that desire that pushed him and said, no, I must make distinction. 
and that's so clear. I must make distinction. Let me tell you something. Somebody with a distinction, employers will be looking for him. I'm telling you, far. I'm, we are there. We know what we are looking for. We know the people we want. Employers will be looking for him. You know, you must have that desire. Don't just come. You know, some of us we spend so much. To, to come to this country. Some of us will spend 12,000, 13,000 pounds. If you calculate even your flight money, your accommodation money, your degree, your cost will be going to over 20,000 uh, 20, pounds. And you want to come and just graduate with an average degree? No, that will not be your law. You must have that desire. You must have that desire to succeed, that desire for success. That nothing else but a distinction. I say nothing else but a distinction. Yeah. I remember many years ago when I was doing my undergraduate year, every semester, at the beginning of the semester, I always fight in my modules. The grade I want in my modules before the beginning of every semester. And I will put it there because that's my data. I will put it there. A, 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 A. At the beginning, before we start lectures at all, I will just put there distinction. And guess what? At the end of that semester, when I compare what I put at the beginning and with what I got at the end of the semester, there is no too much difference. There is no too much difference. And that's why we, we succeed. Because we have that desire. That's what we are telling you today. Have the desire. Don't, go, don't be an ordinary student. Have the desire that you want to be an extraordinary student. Have the desire that you want to be on top. Have, have the desire that you want to be where you ought to be. And you will be there in Jesus' name. You see that in 2 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 15. Time will fail me to read all these passages uh, to all because I know our dinner time is almost near. Then number three, there must be the dependence upon the Savior. These are the things you need to sow. The pain, you listen to the testimony of our brethren, the three of them, they say they depended on God. They did not put God out of the matter. You must depend on the Savior. The Bible says that, you know, trust the Lord with all thy heart. Commit thy way. You listen to the testimony of our sister. She said she committed our, our desire to God and said, God, lead me. And God, God, God gave her a good cause. You say she committed to God. Don't just say, oh, I want to do this by myself. No. There are many people that struggle for success. But in our own time, we don't struggle for success because we trusted God. You listen to the testimony of our brother, he never struggled. You listen to the testimony of the other brother, he never struggled. We don't spend eight hours studying. We don't do that. In my own time, I remember in my final year in the university, you know, we had what, you know, during my final year exams, I had to take three courses coming from a pastoral conference, where I was already a pastor from the university. I had to take three courses coming from the university, you know, and going for that conference. Those of us who are familiar with the strategic conference, my final year. And these three courses are, you know, they are, you know, they are like um, three unit courses. And I just made up my mind and said, look, is everything is on God. You know, we go to church, we preach, we talk Bible study, we were in fellowship, like our sister was saying, you know, it was difficult, you finish course, uh, your course lecture by 5 p.m., you wait again, you go to the uh, fellowship. This is not where we live our life. And we, because we depended on God. It's not by our own strength. When people look at us, you know, somebody step with me in my, in my, in my old set then and say, ah, he makes sure and he say, Israel, if somebody follow you, that person will fail. Because we don't study as they study. We don't spend our you know, whole life in the library and things like that. We still take time to do the work of God. We still take time to serve God. And, you know, I never came out as a dog. I told you already, I got employed straight from the school. Straight from school. That's what we're telling us right here today. If you depend upon the Savior, you will make it. And the Lord will give us that success in Jesus' name. Number four, there is the need for the discipline of a scholar. You don't want to hear this. There is the need for the discipline. You need to be disciplined. You need to have your timetable. You need to know. See, today I still have time. I still have timetable. I still plan my time. 
I know what I'm supposed to do at this time and at this time. I know the number of hours of sleep. I sleep every day. I measure myself. There must be the discipline. You must have the discipline of a scholar. You must have a timetable for your life activities every day. Every day. Very important. Don't say, oh, <laughs> there is no need. I just live by the Spirit of God. No, you must be able to account for your 24 hours in a day. That's the discipline of a scholar. You must be able to account for it. How do you spend your time? Plan your life. Plan your time. Be disciplined. If you say, I'm going to the library at this time, you go to the library. You know, uh, this is not the time for socializing. Do you understand? You must be able to contain some of those things. The number of hours you spend on Facebook. The number of hours you spend on WhatsApp and things like that. You know, you must not be that kind of student that almost eight hours in a day, you have eight hours in a day and two hours already is gone on Facebook. Two hours is gone on, fa on, West, on WhatsApp. Two hours is gone on other activities. No, there must be the discipline of a scholar. Discipline yourself. No, we've told you summer is, I mean, uh, winter is coming now. You know, you must not spend time sleeping all the time. Discipline, I've told you already. You know, you can cut your sleep to six hours a day, five hours a day. That will do you a lot of good. Discipline of a scholar, number five, determination to succeed. You must have that determination to succeed. I'll be, that, have that I can attitude. The Philippians chapter 4 tells us, I can do all things through Christ that what strengthened me. Have that I can attitude. Always say to yourself, I can. When the lecture, you know, I remember uh, when, uh, my first year in the university, you know, there's this course that they told us that uh, when you are an engineering student, you know, engineering math is what you get baptized with in your first year in university. When you do exam for three hours, engineering student could be any weakness. You know, in that course, there are people that are carryovers. And, you know, it's the, math, the lecturer himself is so difficult that the highest you can get in his course was 2.0. But I made up my mind and said, this course, even though there was that fear, and say, ah, <laughs> this man doesn't give more than two points. But I made up my mind and said, for me, I must have distinction in this course. I must have an A in this course. Others may, may go for 1.0, 2.0, but for me, I must have an A in this course. And when the result came out, in fact, my own result is the only one outstanding. All the others, we are talking of a course of over 200 students. All the others were just 1.0, 2.0, F and failure and things like that. But you know that's what I tell you know, that you must have the determination. Don't let any lecturer put you there. Have that determination to succeed and you will succeed in Jesus' name. Number six, there must be the diligence of a student. You must be diligent. You might have, we've said it already during the workshop. You must be diligent. You must give yourself to study. Give yourself to research. Give yourself, make effort. Get to the library. Get to the materials. Get, get, you know, get references. Don't do a thesis and you are just quoting a, a Google. Google alone. I just put only Google link. Google link. That doesn't give you a distinction. Do you understand? Get references. Go to your library. Get reference material. Make use of those references. Quote them. Make use of works of other people. Quote them. Don't just be like, you know, you know, the uh, internet has made life easy now. Even you know, if you want to say, if you want to teach a course now, when the lecturer is sitting, people are just googling and googling and googling. There are some things in googling that are wrong. Do you understand? That's why it's important you go to the library and make use of all those hard materials, references along with the uh, uh, internet facilities. And then lastly, there will be the direction of the Spirit. Learn to depend on the Spirit of God. As many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. When we are writing the exam, we always ask God for his school. Do you know that? We always ask God, help God. But, uh, spirit of lead me where is the teach lead me to where that will come out in the exam and I'm telling you you know there are people always come to me and say pastor you know let me tell you something the church I was leading there during exam period is usually free 
because we will put tutorial and success things during and people will call because and God always give us revelation. You know, I remember one particular course, we've done it in the tutorial, word for word, everything. That's how it came out in the exam. If you are, God will lead you. Who owns the heart of the lecturer? Is it not God? I'm asking you, is it not God? That's why it's good to pray to go and ask God to lead you. God will lead you to areas that will come out in the exam. You will not leave it blindly. That's why we tell you that when you put God first, others may spend eight hours in the library. You, the two hours you spend in the library, will cover for their eight hours. Do you understand? Do you get the thing I'm saying? And the Lord will lead us in Jesus' name. But they are wise sower. You don't want to be that unwise sower. Tell your neighbor, don't be the unwise sower. Point to your neighbor and say, don't be the unwise sower. Because there are unwise sowers that are sowing for a doom future. A doom future. That will not be your own future in Jesus' name. You know, we must make up our mind, we want to be wise sower. But then there are some people that will refuse all these things we've talked about. There's one for me. I don't need Christ, I don't need God, I need just myself, I am, in, I am the Lord of myself, I am the God of myself. Like people will tell us, oh, God, for evangelism. No, you still need God. Don't keep your wife, don't depend on your own strength. I know people that came in, you know, that said they want to do this course, but like I told us, some of them they didn't finish. Some of them they ran mental before the end of their courses. Some of them, in fact, you know, then in, uh, in our own school then, first year is like a preliminary. And if you have a carryover, if you fail any course, if you say you want to do engineering and you fail the course, that you, in your second year, they will just throw you to other faculties. They can even throw you to social sciences and say, you cannot do engineering, or they will throw you to science and say, go and do maybe botany, or in all these uh, uh, no, non-professional, I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say, all these, you know, courses that are not related to engineering. Because they are unwise, they are unwise, they don't take time. Don't be that unwise sower. And so for me, well, I'm happy, I am free from parental control. Now, I want to live and live for myself alone. That you are not living for yourself alone. You are not living for your life alone. No, don't be that unwise soul. Let's open our Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32, I will read verse 29. Deuteronomy chapter 32, oh that they were wise, that they understood this, that they will consider their latter end. Oh that they are wise, oh that they are wise, that they will consider their latter end. Oh that you will be wise, my brother, oh that you will be wise, my sister. I've told you, you know that people, consider your latter end. You know, some of you that came from non-EU country, your days in this country is limited. Your visa will soon expire. Don't start to consider the expiration day of your visa when it is a month to the time. Consider it now. Consider it now and begin to plan for a delightful future. Don't be the one that, you know, when your visa expires, you begin to run up and down. And say, oh, I want to, I want to, you know, you begin to look for ways that, you know, and a lot of them have been caught like that. So people have been deported, you know, people have been, you know, put in prison, in immigration centers. Don't be like that. That's how we've taught you all these things, so that you will consider your latter end. And the Lord will give us understanding in Jesus' name. Quickly, point three, before we pray, the watchful sowers. Securing a desirable future. Watchful sower desiring a, a desire, I mean, securing a desirable future. We must watch all these things we've told us now as you sow. Don't just leave them there. But don't, don't, you know, it's easy when you start your timetable the first week to follow your timetable. Is that not so? I mean, if you have had that experience, you wrote the timetable down. The first week, you were so ready. And you follow that timetable. Have you had that experience before? Second, second week, <laughs> they still begin to die down. Third week, they begin to die down. Fourth week, 
You forgot to tell me. I'm not going to lie. That's it. You watch food. When you plan that timetable, first week, follow it. Don't, don't, don't be discouraged if you miss one or two items the first week. Don't be discouraged. You understand? Don't be discouraged. Follow it second week. Follow it third week. Follow it the fourth week. You, and before you know it, it becomes part of you. That before you go out every morning, you plan your time. You plan your life. That's what I do. I do that for my family. Before we go out in the morning, we plan our time. What are the things we are supposed to do today? And we do it. And as I'm coming back, as we're coming back home, we are asking ourselves the question: What have we achieved for today? Everybody gives reports. Everybody, everybody, including me, their dad. If I ask them, my kids also they ask me. They ask me and say, Dad, how was your day? That's my report. I have to give reports. I can also I was I was in the park all day. No. I tell them the things I did in the office because they are also going to tell me how they spent their own day. That's why we are telling you. Let be watchful. Question yourself. Don't just plan it. You know, like our brother told us in his testimony. When he did the first semester, he still went back to his original plan. I want to have a distinction. But what I've had in this first semester may not get me there. But then it took time. He went to his lecturer. He asked the lecturer. The lecturer said, well, <laughs> he has to work extra. That's what that's the watchfulness we are talking about. Watch over your dreams. How many of you have plans for your life? Do you plan for your life? Do you have long time plan goals? Do you have, you know, what I always do, what, what we always do in my own in our own life is that we have what we call long time goals for our lives. We have that. It's written down. If you come to my house, we will blow it open in our secret chamber. It's not for every eyes now. Do you understand? Then we have what we call Five years time uh, timeline goals. Five years go. What you want to be in five years time? Then we have what you call a year go. What you want to be at the end of it? Do you plan for your life? What do you want to be in five years time? Do you have that time? Do you have that plan? Planning. That's the watchfulness we are talking about. If you want a desirable future, there is need for planning. There is need for welcoming. The problem is many of us we don't sit down to take stock of our lives. We don't sit down to think to think. We don't take time to meditate where we want to be. We don't and if you don't take time to plan for yourself, you will not have dreams. You will not you don't be living life day in, day out. You wake up in the morning, your life will just be like the people in, in Genesis. He lived 20 years, 300 years, and he died. He lived 700 years, and he died. That will not be your own life. That, your, well, that will not be your own life. You will not live and then you die. No, 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 no. You must live and then you make a difference. You must leave, and then the world will have a record and say, oh, there was a time. You see people, you, you've heard of people names. Is that not, you've heard of people like uh, uh, Winston Churchill. He lived and he made a difference in the UK. Even back in Africa, you've had people like Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela is not an ordinary man. People still talk about, in fact, the uh, UN, they've declared a day called Mandela Day. Is that not so? Look at that um, young girl now, just 17 years old. She's already won a Nobel Prize now for peace. Mandela, don't be an ordinary person. If these people, some of them, they know no God. They have no God. They have no Christ. And yet you are. We are teaching you all these things. You want to live an ordinary life. You will not live an ordinary life in Jesus' name. People will hear of you. I say people will hear of you. They will hear of your name. They will hear you will make a difference in our generation. But then there is need to be watchful. There is need to plan. There is need to, for us to have this desirable future. What does it entail? If you write that word future down quickly before we pray. Future. The F for future is favor with God and man. If you are watching, you have that future. 
If you are doing all these things we are talking about, we've talked about all throughout this program, you have that future. Favor with God and man. You see that in the life of Christ. He has favor with God and favor with man. Then the youth there, you have a unique success. Your success will not be an ordinary success. It will be a unique one. It will be a unique one that people will hear and their ears will turn good. I say it will be a unique success. Yeah. The TDF, you have a triumphant life. Triumphant life, triumphant living. That's the desire. That's where you ought to be. And you'll be there in Jesus' name. The youth there, you have unlimited blessings. Unlimited. There shall be showers of blessings. We've sang it already. If you do all these things we are talking about today, you allow God in your life, you allow Christ into your heart, you receive Him as your Lord and Savior, then deserve the future of unlimited blessings to be yours in Jesus' name. The other day you have witches untold. Witches untold. And the idiot, you have excellent life. You'll be above your equals. I said you will be above your equals. You will, you know, you'll be relevant in the society. You'll be relevant in the country. People will see you and you'll be unique. And the Lord will make us that success in Jesus' name. As we end up, we just want to go with this code. If you look at your program, go to the last page of your program quickly. Let's see some of these success promoters. Men who have goals and plans. Detach to others. Why men we have, who have no goals or plan are detected to? You must have goals. You must plan. What do you want to achieve? You anything you can think of and believe in, you can achieve with God going with you. Your attitude, remember this, is determined by your attitude. And if you write that word attitude, if you just put the vertical letters of that word attitude, if you, must, if you add them together, it will give you 100%. If you want to get to 100% of your life, it's determined by your attitude. What attitude are you putting into your course, into your career, into your life, into your being? Man, what's your attitude? Great deeds are usually what? at great risks. That's the truth. You must take risks. You must take risks. We are telling you now, oh, you see, oh, for me, this is what pastor is saying. I've never slept for more than 10 hours in a day. And pastor is telling me now that I should sleep for 5, 6 hours in a day. It's a risk. Take the risk. If you want to achieve great risks, take the risk. Be a post, uh, be a posting stamp. Stick to one thing until you get it. You know the postage stamp? You know that when you post a letter, you put a stamp on it. Is that not so? That stamp is the thing that will take that letter to its destination. Be like that. Stick on that thing, on your dream. Don't, easy give, don't give up easily on your dream. Stick to your dreams. And you will get there in Jesus' name. We want to end with this last word. Strive for success. Strive. Make sure. So this thing called strive. What is it? S. Start small. Start in a small way. It might be difficult for you. Maybe you've been sleeping 10 hours before. It might be this, this difficult for you to start sleeping for 5 hours. But you can start in a small way. Start and say, okay, I will sleep 8 hours today. At the end of the week, I will sleep 7 hours. I don't, maybe you've been finding it difficult to sit down. And have concentrated study for one hour. You can start in a small way and say, okay, I will start maybe by 30 minutes just to sit down and study. Go to the library. You might get some distraction when you open your, when you open your laptop. Facebook may call. You say, no, this is not time for Facebook. You close. Start in a small way. Don't start to deny yourself. Don't start and say, okay, today I will not go on Facebook maybe for two hours. I will not go on Facebook in the morning. I will not go on social media, WhatsApp, YouTube, you know now there are a lot of many Nigerian and all these uh, African movies online in YouTube, many films on YouTube, and if you are not careful, you can live all your life watching YouTube. Do you understand? Cut all those things away. 
You cannot deny yourself. It may not be easy for you the first time, but little by little, start small. Think possibility. Think, think possibility. Think possibility. Don't think of failure. Think possibility. Think that it is possible for you to have a distinction and you will have it. Reach a little further. That's the arrow there for strength. Reach a little further. Reach a little further. You've wait for um, uh, 60 minutes and it's like the thing is not entering again. Eh? Don't, don't give up. You understand? Just take a break. Work hard. Don't say because, oh, I've wait 60 minutes, I can't understand again. You now pass your back and say, the next thing I want to do now is to go and sleep. Mm -mm, that may not pay you. You can just walk away. Do you understand? Go and take fresh air. Walk out of the library. Go and take fresh air. And then come back again. And reach. That's what we are talking about. Reach a little further. It seems that the brain is stuck. You don't understand that. You've been trying to solve that thing. And you don't really understand. Don't give up on that. Reach a little further. I remember there was a course we did in our old time there. The lecturer was asking me. He came to my desk and was, he done an exam more. He was asking me that uh, Israel, how did you solve this question? Please give me your, uh, make sure you write it detail because that was what he used for the marking scheme. You're reaching it too far. Be an extraordinary student. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Invest wisely. Invest your time wisely. Don't waste your life. When we're in school, there are some things we could not do. Not because we don't love it. No, we don't even have the time for it. Do you understand? There are some things, there are some functions we could not go. Not because we are not, and not because we don't like it, but because we don't even have time for it. Invest your time wisely. People come to you and say, oh, you know, this is Abadi on Friday night. It's a rocky night. Let's go and walk together. <laughs> Engineering student. I don't think if you want to graduate as a successful engineering student or medical, you know, medical the medical course is very intensive. And those of us who are doing law, law is very intensive. My wife is a lawyer. I know till now she's still reading. And I keep telling the children, I say, look, your mom has taken a career that she will read all throughout her life. She still reads. That's it. It's very intensive. There are some things, there are some courses you will do, you don't have time to waste. You have to invest your time wisely. Don't waste your life. Don't say, oh, eh, no, it's, it's, it's not true. It's true. It's true. How many of you have read of Albert Einstein? How many of you you read of Albert Einstein? Do you know how many experiments he did before he got the experiment that gave up the ball? Do you know how many? He spent all his life in the laboratory. Almost all his life in the laboratory. And today we are talking about when you look at the ball, you will just remember about this. I'm not talking about I've heard of Isaac Newton. Those science people, if you know Isaac, you know Isaac Newton's law. Isaac Newton never wasted his life. Do you understand? When he came up with the, the three laws, the Newton laws, mass energy, mass energy reaction. Do you know how he got that? He was just in his gardening. He was not wasting his life. He was still, he was still you know, his life was on that, was on science, was on those things. And something those go, and that's how he got it. If it's somebody that uh, is uh, wasting his life away, you think you hear of his name today? No. Don't waste your life. Invest your life wisely. Great men, I'm telling you. Great men don't waste their life. They invest their time wisely. Great men. Talk of somebody like our father in the Lord, Pastor W. F. Don't waste his life. If you've read his biography, if you've read it, he's, he's a first class product. And when he was, you know, when he told us his life, how he lived his life, you know, how he put in all those things, and then some of us will say we've not even started. And today, even in his age, in his, he's over 70, he, he's traveling, he's traveling all over, he's still busy, he's still studying. You know, just two weeks ago, I read of one of the former presidents in Nigeria. In his, his, 
over 77 years now, is going for his PhD program. And here you are, you are doing masters, and you say, I'm tired. Can you be tired? How can you be tired? You must keep, you must, you must, you must, you must invest wisely. Visualize success. Always have success in front of you, not failure. Always have great dreams ahead of you, not petty, petty dreams. And expand carefully. Expand carefully. When you strike with all these things, when you plant all these things, remember, planting the seed for a desirable success, future. You have that success in Jesus' name. These things we share with you, they are not difficult things. We have tried them. We have tried and they have worked for us. If they have worked for us, they will work for you. I say they will work for you. Tell your neighbor they will work for you. Let us bow down our heads and pray now. Let us commit ourselves to the hands of the Lord. Let's pray that the Lord Himself will help us. Remember, you need Christ at the very beginning of your success. You need Christ. Let Him be your Lord. Let Jesus into your heart. Let Jesus come in. Let Jesus into your heart and into your life. If you are not yet born again, if you are still a sinner friend here, confess your sins to God. Accept the Lord Jesus into your heart. Let Jesus into your heart. Let him come in. Confess your sins to God. Tell the Lord that you are very sorry. All the things you've done. Tell him to forgive you. To wash you with his blood. Tell Jesus. Let him come in into your heart. Let Jesus in. What is the point of having success if Jesus is not there? That's a wasted success. That success will not last. If you're a backslider, confess your sins to God. Let Jesus into your heart. Confess your sins to Him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to be sounding amen. 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 I'm sure you have had a lot today. And the Lord has spoken to you at one point or the other in today's ministration. Maybe through the seminar, through the message. And I want to tell you that there is no success without Jesus. And that is the reason why I want to present to you this very morning that opportunity. Maybe you are here and you have not given your life to Jesus. You are far away from the cross and the cross is far away from you because of your lifestyle. I want you to uh, raise up your hand while the other people close their eyes. Nobody is looking at you. The decision is between you and God. Start a new life with Christ today. If you are there and you know you want to give your life to Jesus, you want to start a journey with Christ today. You don't, you don't want to start your life in crisis. You don't want your life to be in crisis. You want to come out of the crisis in which the enemy, Satan, has put you. Raise up your hand while we pray together. There is no shine in that. Nobody is looking at you. Just tell God that God, I am ready for you. I am ready to accept you as my personal Savior. And Christ himself is very much ready to save you. All he wants from you is your cooperation. Is your release that God, I am releasing myself to you. And we save you. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. Our everlasting Father, the King of Glory, I'm presenting as many people that have decided this very afternoon to accept you as their personal Savior, to turn away from sin, to turn away from unrighteousness, to turn away from their old life. The Bible tells us that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. They know they cannot make anything without you. They need you in their life. Divine Lord, I pray that you will deliver them from the power of sin in Jesus' name. The Bible makes us to understand that you came to this world to shed your sin and your blood for the sins of the whole world, for the sins of humanity. And the last thing you said on the cross at Calvary was, it is finished. The work of redemption, you have completed it on the cross at Calvary. And pray that today, O Lord, you will, you will separate them from iniquity in Jesus' name. The power to start to live a new life. A life that they will continue to live in you, with you, all the days of their lives. So that you can have that close intimacy with them. So that they can begin to succeed. I pray you will work out in their lives in Jesus' name. And I pray that today we mark a turning point in the life of everyone present here today in Jesus' name. God of heaven, I pray that this message, it will be the kind that you will continue to remember all the days of your lives. Father, let it be so in Jesus' name. We bless you because you have answered our prayers. And I'm lifting up all the people that you have used today unto the hand of the Lord. I pray that more of your unctions will continue to be upon them in Jesus' name. We bless you because you've answered our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Uh, I really want to bless the name of the Lord because of the way God has really blessed us today. And I want to ask you a question. Have you been blessed? And the Lord will bring the blessings to be permanent in Jesus' name. So, immediately we leave here now, we'll be going uh, for the dinner. The dinner will not be taking place here. So, we'll just transport uh, our brethren down to where we'll be having the dinner. And the Lord will continue to bless us mightily in Jesus' name. As we well as we've been told during the announcement, the days of our services are on Sunday by 10 o'clock in the morning. We used to meet here. Uh, every Sunday by 10 uh, in the morning for our, our Sunday service and the time that God has really been blessing us. What we have uh, experienced today is just uh, I mean, a tip of an uh, iceberg. So this coming Sunday, let's make it a time to be here. If you are needed to be picked up, uh, you can be picked up as well. And every Monday, we don't used to meet here for our Monday Bible study, but we have a church that is very close nearby. It's just about three to four minutes walk from here. It's called St. Fitix Parish uh, Church. It's very close to this place. We normally meet here by 7 o'clock uh, every evening, uh, every Monday evening. So let's bear that in mind. It's a time that God has really been blessing us through the Bible story. And I want to believe God that as you are coming tomorrow, God Himself will bless you abundantly in Jesus' name. And in that same venue, we normally have our Friday week and never hour as well by 7 o'clock in the evening. On Monday, uh, which, uh, which starts at uh, the, uh, uh, the working day, 7 o'clock. Then Friday, that ends the working day as well by 7 o'clock. So let's bear that in mind. But, on, uh, on, uh, but every Sunday, we normally come here to meet by 10 o'clock uh, in the morning. So let's bear all these days in mind. And God in heaven will continue to bless us more and more in Jesus' name. Thank you and God bless you. Let's share the grace together. Because of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and evermore. Amen. Surely, we will make our message and follow us all the days of our life, and we shall be with us to the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Thank you and God bless you all.
And as many of us who are nourishing down our hands as well, we let the devil down our hands. And we also that we are trying to follow our we use the boss and the car as well. You understand what I mean? The boss is not taking care of the boss. The boss is not taking care of the boss. The boss is not taking care of the boss. The boss is not taking care of the boss. Because they cannot be inside the boss and the boss will be carried through. The boss is ready. Let's go out and let's go out. Hey, oh no. Oh, this is a crop tire. Yeah. Oh, sorry, no crop. Hey, fire. Sorry, it's not a crop. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> 